Okay, so welcome to the Koanga Seed Room, Seed Bank. I call this the bank. This is the most important bank in the country. So when the seed comes into the seed room, it's already been through quite a few processes. It's been harvested in the garden at the right time, and it's been laid in sheets um, in the greenhouses and dried until it's crunchy or crackly, so it's then easy to stomp or thresh or whatever we have to do to it to clean it and get the pods off it and the chaff off it and it's already been so it's been cleaned it's already been graded by putting it through a whole series of different sized screens and the aim of that is to get what we want to end up with is the biggest heaviest seed for our mother seed and we throw away the small lightest seed and what we sell is um the middle grade seed which is the heavy middle sized seed and the light big seed the very biggest heaviest seed is our mother seed uh, if there's more of that than we need then it goes into the sale seed so what we've got here is our um, seed as it's come from the seed cleaning shed and it's been cleaned and graded it's been put into the freezer all of our seeds go through the freezer for three days to make sure that there are no bugs in the seed and then it comes in here into this bin and this is the last of our last season seed coming through this is a seed line that's been grown by joseph land up in the hokianga sutton's giant runner beans it's our jack and the beanstalk bean and so what happens then is all the seed has to be given an accession number we have to take out the mother seed we have to take out seed for the germination testing and we have to take out seed for our insurance barrel which gets um, stored somewhere else so we uh, I, I'll, I'll come up to our folder so here we have um, Saturn's giant runner beans so I'll look up for Fabaceae in here and I'll find Phaseolus calcineus which is the genus and species for this Vulgaris, most of the beans are vulgaris, but this is a cocinius. They're obviously last. Oh, that's our mixes. This isn't a mix. Here we are here. Phaseolus cocinius. So it's in the family Fabaceae genus Phaseolus species cocinius. So I will write down pH Phaseolus C. cocinius, a general seed line 0, 0. One. That's the next number. This is um, Sutton's Giant, grown by Joseph Land in 2016. So it's got a number, that session number goes on here PHVG0041. So that number will stay with the seed line, it'll go on all the seed packets the seed goes out, and so we can always identify what year it was grown, who grew it, and we'll, we can trace it back to, we can trace it right back. So then it's time to collect our mother seed out of here. So when we collect mother seed, what, we, what I mean by mother seed is the seed that we keep to grow out when we grow the seed line out again, or if, if Joseph grows it, or Gail perhaps. So we take three times as much as what we really need to keep the seed line strong so there are minimum numbers for all these for every seed line they're all different for runner beans it um, isn't very many it's only a handful really so we'd take three handfuls or um, for runner beans I'd probably say 10 seeds was a minimum number so maybe 30 seeds and put it in the mother seed bag so once the seed um, is the mother seed is packed which is enough for three grow outs sometimes that's determined not by the minimum numbers we need to keep the seed strong it might be determined by how much seed we need to grow because there's a demand because we're selling it and we know how much we need available to sell so there might be more seed because of that reason so then it gets packed and stored away in here which is where we keep all of our mother seed um, I always feel nervous that this is our secure mother seed I mean it doesn't feel very secure it's the old wardrobe in this old bedroom on the south side of the house which is the coolest room and I would rather see the mother seed in a much more secure situation um, so uh, um, yeah so here's the Chenobadaceae 
bucket where we will be having the mother seed for beetroot, spinach, silver beet, chard, mangle beet, sugar beet and auric. In the brassicas we've divided the brassica family up into the Oleraceae genus species and the, um, the rapa species because there are a lot of both. APACA, carrots, parsnips, celery. So all our mother seeds in there. So when we grow, when we get seed out to give to our garden crew, they come from it comes from these barrels. And the reason why we have three times as much as we need is because if that, it's a basically insurance policy. If we have a disaster, if we have a hurricane and we lose that crop, we've got another lot. Um, or, you know, a possum eats it or whatever. You never know what might happen. So we've taken our mother seed out of the seed that we're processing. We also take out two times the minimum number for our insurance barrel bucket. And so this bucket contains um, seed from every single seed line that we harvested in the 2016 season. So here we've got Kamal Kamal. That's also come from Joseph Land. Or all his seeds are on top because they came in last. Kangama, which is a really special old corn. And here's another special corn from Joseph. The Hokianga red and yellow. Tom uh, the Hokianga beefsteak tomato. Perilla or shisu, which is a special Korean herb, Asian herb. Oxheart carrot. So that this barrel here will get put into a rat-proof container and taken to another another site for storage so that if we happen to have a fire or any great disaster here, we can go back to our insurance barrels in an emergency. We also put aside... Um, a packet of every seed that comes through the system for germination testing and they're out now being germination tested um, and then all the rest of our seed is what we sell once we've taken all that out so um, here on the shelves we have our vegetable seeds that we have for sale um, up here we have the flowers that are for sale and the herbs and essentially all the other buckets and barrels in this room are backup containers of seed for refilling these jars when they are emptied on seed packing nights. So every single thing in here is in, a, is in its right place. Hopefully, usually always is. And um, there's a very specific process that all these seeds go through. There's a lot of paperwork to go with every single seed line. And really these facilities are totally inadequate for this for this job um, but because we are pretty much selling all of our seed within two years of growing it, it, it um, we're getting by at the moment but um, ideally we need a, a purpose-built seed storage room we, we're coping we've always coped with what we've got um, yeah, these seeds are really special to me because I know the people who gifted, they all told me the stories of their seeds when they gifted them and I know the stories, I know the whakapapa of all of these seeds and I love to share that as much as we can through our catalogues and through our website. Um, but there are, always a few, there are always a few in here that are more special than the others just because of the special memories associated with them. And this is one of those seeds. This is... Um, New Zealand heirloom corn. It's been in this land for a very long time. It's flower corn. It, it presumably came to New Zealand with the, um, either the missionaries or the whalers and sealers. Um, but it's been here a very long time. It's been here before. Um, it's been it's been here since the early 1800s. It's called Kangama white corn. And when I received this corn, it came in the mail one day in a packet, in an envelope, an ordinary normal envelope, and there were nine seeds. And there was a letter with it from a um, a koro, no, from a from a gardener in the near Ruatoria called Bill Blaine. And he sent me these seeds, and he said to me, um, they just looked like white pearls when I opened the envelope. They were so they're so beautiful. And he said to me. These are our these are our tanga. These are the ancient seeds of our communities on the East Cape, and I'm really scared we're going to lose them because people are eating everything we're growing, and the seed isn't being saved here anymore. 
and he told me about his kuru, his grandfather, his guard, the gardener who he'd learned from, who'd kept them alive and he wasn't going to be guarding anymore so he sent them to us to keep alive and when seeds come like that it, I just cry, it's like they're so special and I know now that there are lots of people keeping the seed line alive and you can't grow it from nine seeds probably more than once and keep it strong. However, we did it, we grew it, and it's now, it's our favourite corn for um, tortillas and for pozzoli. It swells much faster and much larger than all the other flower corns, and it's really, really delicious. And yeah, it's a very special part of our lives now. Um, and Joseph, Joseph Land is also keeping this one going up in the Hokianga, and it's an important part of their family's life now as well. Corn is the easiest grain to grow in this land. If you're a home gardener and you want to grow your own grains, we're sort of becoming corn people around here. Another really special um, seed, which a lot of people in this land um, would be connected to, is this one. We call it the Kaipoi Pink Seeded Bean. It act it's a dwarf bean, and it has a kind of pinky ready seed. And it's come to us from so many people have sent us the seed from all over New Zealand that it's obvious that it was grown widely um, at the point where our English ancestors were coming to this land. It came with our English ancestors. Um, it, it is In America it's called Canadian Wonder and it went from um, Canada to England and then came here with our English ancestors. It's a very super endangered almost extinct seed in Canada now and it came to me with every person that sent it had a different name for it so we ended up calling it Kaipoi Pink Seeded because one of the places it came from was Kaipoi and that was the decision we made we usually always name seeds after either the place it came from or the people who sent it we never make a name up so this is the Kaipoi Pink Seeded bean it's an outstanding green bean early bean late bean and it's an outstanding dry bean as well. It's a really, really lovely bean. Um, this is one that always, um, this is one that I love to talk, well, I love to eat and I love to garden and grow. And we've got an enormous crop of really beautiful seed out here this year of this seed line. It was always called Dally Cabbage. When I lived up north in Northland, it's known all over the north, well, it was 30 years ago, as Dally Cabbage. And most Marae, had it growing around wild even and it went in the boil ups and it's actually known overseas as collards so in New Zealand it, we've called it Dally cabbage because it came with the Dalmatian gum diggers and it was widely grown in north in the north where the gum diggers were and it became known as Dally cabbage but actually everywhere else in the world it's called collards and it actually came from Africa and went with the um, the black slaves that were taken to the southern states of America they grew it there and it always was a very important part of their diet over there and the really awesome thing about it it's real peasant food and it's incredibly nutritious it's a cabbage that has no heart it just goes up and up and up it's a leaf cabbage and because every leaf is in the full sun every leaf is photosynthesizing every leaf is green every leaf contains a lot more nutrition than the white leaves in the heart of a hearting cabbage so it's well known now that collards or dally cabbage as we've always called it is a hot, one of the most nutritious brassicas on this earth with a special story in this land um the port albert cucumbers is another great one this is actually one of the early seeds that we collected we had in this collection it was sent to me by a descendant of a German immigrant that settled um, in Port Albert. The Port Albert was a German um, colony, a settlement. And somebody sent me the seed and the story that went with it was that the Albert Landers only had one day off a year. And they, on that day, they went to Hargraves Bay on the Kuiper. They rode across the harbour from Port Albert to Hargraves Bay and they took cucumber sandwiches with them for their picnic at Hargraves Bay under the old trees on the beach there. Um, and it's, I've never seen this cucumber anywhere else in the world. It's a torpedo shaped cucumber with um, a lemony coloured skin. 
and it never goes bitter it's kind of got like black spines on it on the skin it never goes bitter it's just a really really beautiful tender good tasting delicious old-fashioned cucumber that came to this land with the German immigrants port of Port Albert essentially this is my favorite place to work <laughs> It's really a lot. Of, it's really satisfying working in this room with the seeds, and I do this work um, with Michelle. And every seed here, I mean, I feel connected to all of these seeds, and I think that's the gift for anyone who works with the seeds is that you do get connected to the seeds, and you learn a lot about who who you are, and you're connect. And I mean, the whole journey of um, stepping back into that process of co-evolution with our environment with the soil with our food i mean the seeds the seeds are the beginning of it all really and it's only by saving our own seeds and growing our own food or supporting someone in our local area to grow it that we do actually step back into that um, age old process of co-evolution which means we are in relationship with our environment and we respond to our environment and the seeds respond to our environment and our bodies respond to the seeds there's actually communication going on between all parts of that circle and we've broken that by going to the supermarket and eating food from China we're actually responding now to the food to the situation in China the environment, the ecology that's happening in China is affecting us because we're eating food from there. We know now through epigenetics how our food communicates with our DNA. So it is by growing our own seeds, grow, using our own seeds, saving our own seeds to grow our own food, to get into relationship with our own ecology. I mean, our food, plant, our food plants are the, are the link between the universe where we, where we live, the earth where we stand, and our bodies and so it's the communication between the sky and the earth and through our food plants to us that connects us and so this is how we reconnect this is the best way to re the only way to reconnect is to start growing food again and saving seeds and and it all just happens really so for me this is the most magic room and the most important place there is is where we where we save our seeds and all the all the history and all our stories are in the seeds so the seeds really are us and our future is held in those seeds and here we are in the fourth bedroom of a hundred and something year old house um, the coldest room so that we can keep them in the best conditions and uh, yeah this is where we are <laughs>